Hello everybody, this is Cameron Snow with Dynomics, and today I'm going to be reviewing how to do porosity calculations. Uh, porosity calculations really represent about the halfway point in a petrophysical analysis. Uh, so by now you should have already done your bad hole, clay volume, and TOC calculations because those will play into our analysis here. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with how to do those, uh, please go to our website, www.dynomics.com. Uh, where you can review videos that we've done for clay volume and TOC analysis uh, to get you up to speed on how to do that. So today we're going to be uh, looking at doing an analysis using density porosity, neutron density, and sonic porosities. Um, so we'll briefly discuss the parameters that you'll need for each of those. Uh, there are some nuances here, especially with how we're going to be doing the uh, clay correction to our porosity, so go from a total porosity to an effective porosity. Uh, and we'll also, you know, briefly discuss uh, if we want to do TOC corrections. So um, with that said, why don't we get started? Uh, today I'm going to be using the Dynomics Petrophysical Insights platform, but you can use whatever software you want. Uh, the principles are all the same, and these are well-known, widely published equations. So I'm actually going to start off on our bad hole plot. Uh, so just so you remember, we have our parameters here in the top left, cross plots here on the bottom left, and our well log panel on the right-hand side. So uh, as I mentioned, you should have already done your bad hole analysis, and this is because you know if we have washout, we're not going to want to include that in our porosity calculation. Uh, we'll have needed to have already done our clay volume analysis. Uh, clay volume is important for two reasons. Uh, clay volumes directly impact how we uh, do our correction from a total porosity down to an effective porosity. So that's one reason you need to already have it done. Secondly, uh, when doing a clay volume analysis, when we set uh, our, our matrix endpoint here, as part of that analysis, that involves setting our matrix density. Um, and so this will be carried forward as one of the parameters that we will use in our porosity calculations. Uh, so uh, TOC analysis is another one of the prerequisites um, that, that we should have done by now. Uh, th this is really only something that you have to do if you have an organic shell interval. Uh, so for example, here we do have an organic shell interval, so you'll want to have done an analysis on your uh, TOC, uh, so you can estimate the scale of the impact that uh, that doing a TOC correction on your porosity will have. Um, if you need some help with that, uh, please check out the video on our website uh, where we do a full, uh, you know, detailed look at doing TOC calculations. So once you have those done, you're ready to do a porosity interpretation. So in the uh, Dynomics platform, uh, you've got uh, three primary methods, the neutron density, density, and sonic porosity methods. Uh, we also have options to run those in order of uh, priority using neutron density first, then density, and then sonic porosity. Uh, you know, which method you choose is, is really uh, up to you and should be determined um, based on your understanding of the lithology as well as the data coverage that you have available. Um, so, you know, a lot of times we don't have uh, sonic porosity logs available, and if that's the case, you're probably going to want to uh, try to use a neutron density or density porosity method. Okay, so some of the parameters will have carried forward from our clay volume analysis. So our lithology presets and our matrix density, those got carried forward from our clay volume analysis into our porosity analysis. Uh, when we're using a method that uses the density uh, curve, uh, such as the neutron density method or the density porosity method, we will need to enter a fluid density. Uh, here I've entered a value of 1. Uh, and that is the value for fresh water. Um, this value can be as high as 1.1. Uh, it really depends on the system you're looking at. If you use a sonic porosity method, there are three parameters you need to set. This is your uh, sonic value for your matrix, water, and shell values. Uh, for the, the first two, your matrix and water values, you can pull those out of, uh, out of a chart book. Um, those are values you can essentially look up. Um, for your shell, you're going to want to set that parameter off of a cross plot. Um, 
that that's a value that can be affected by a number of things, including uh, compaction, uh, variations in lithology, etc. So it's important you get that that set correctly early on. And then optionally here in the Dynamics platform, you can enter in a uh, a maximum porosity. Uh, I've put in 30% here, which is which is pretty generous considering this is a uh, a fairly low porosity uh, sequence of rocks that we're looking at. That that's just there to eliminate extremely erroneous values. So um, there are a couple of of big questions here that relate to um, a couple of the options we have presented, and this is: Do we want to do a TOC correction on our porosity? And uh, do we want to substitute in values where we have bad hole? So um, we'll start with the easier of those, which is, you know, how do we, you know, do we want to substitute values in with bad hole? Uh, if we don't do this, here, here's what the resulting track looks like. We, we essentially end up having an, an incomplete record uh, because we're not doing calculations where we, uh, where we flagged it as washout. And the reason we're not doing calculations there is we don't want to calculate any erroneously high values that, that may be misleading, especially to someone who you know, may be looking at this out of context later on. Uh, so, you know, um, it, it's really a combination of for data completeness and for aesthetics, uh, you know, do we want to use a substitute curve in there? And so I'm going to say yes for that, and we're going to substitute in the values from our sonic porosity. Uh, there, there's no danger in doing that. Um, it's just that it does require you to set your uh, sonic porosity parameters. Um, if you're willing to, to go with it being incomplete, you don't have to set those uh, ahead of time. In terms of TOC correction, it, it really comes down to your reservoirs. Uh, for a lot of the reservoir here, we, we don't have any organic shell. Uh, so, you know, you wouldn't do any corrections here because our TOC values are so low. But down in our organic shell interval, we do have, uh, you know, some, some reasonable TOC values. And so we'll want to do a TOC correction. Now, the impact of that, because uh, kerogen is very low density, uh, you know, we, you know, we need to account for that when we're looking at our computed matrix uh, density values that we've input, and so we'll we'll correct that for you. And so, um, as you can see, when you use a TOC correction, it pushes your porosity values lower. If you're using a, uh, you know, if if you have you know any substantial TOC there. Um, so with that question answered, really kind of the last value here is. How do we do our total porosity to effective porosity calculation? Um, what you'll need to determine there is a shell porosity value. And, uh, you know, you can, you can estimate this a number of ways. You can estimate it from cross plots. You can, uh, you know, look at, look at what your porosity values are in, um, in Shaley intervals, etc. cetera. Uh, you know what I'll say is if you're if you're looking at you know a lot of times conventional or tight conventional reservoirs like a a, a sand or a limestone, uh, you're going to see a very marginal impact. So I've shaded gray in between our effective and total porosity curves here. Um, as you can see in our low clay intervals, there's very little impact. In our high clay intervals, we do see a bit of a correction taking place. Um, and if you, as you increase the porosities in your shell, uh, the correction becomes larger and larger here. So we can see that, you know, if we put a shell porosity of 100%, that's uh, really, that's essentially stripping out all the shell out of your um, porosity calculation. Whereas if you put it at a more reasonable value, like 30 to 40%, uh, we, we can see that that, that decreases the correction there, um, you know. So, you know, that's something that is really going to be system dependent. Um, so that's up up to you to uh, determine how to set that. But you do have full control over that here in the platform. So uh, I know that was quick, um, and we didn't go into a lot of detail on how to set the parameters. Uh, but hopefully that gives you uh, an idea of how you do porosity calculations. Uh, if you have any questions, please reach out to me. You can reach me at csnow at or you can visit our website, www.denomics.com. Thank you.
and I hope this was helpful. Bye.